We're here today because Mr. Bush has decided to send the Maryland National Guard over to Iraq. Obviously, the Maryland National Guard, nor any National Guard, they don't belong there. They belong at home doing the things that they were trained for. They were not trained to fight a war, especially this war, which is now a civil war. So we are here to try and let our legislators know that they need to pressure the Bush administration to bring our National Guard home. We want Governor O'Malley to put pressure on Mr. Bush to bring the National Guard home. We want him to be vocal and visible about this. Marie, I just want to follow up with you. Both <clears throat> Mikulski and Cardin have the excuse that if they continue the funding, they're protecting the troops. Now, you've protested, particularly Mikulski, a number of times. So how do you feel about their explanation? Well, we have not only protested both of them, we've met with them and told them that there is no way that they can possibly believe they're supporting the troops by funding their continued deaths and woundings. It's that simple. I mean, as Delegate Carter said, it's, it's a perfect phrase to say it's political schizophrenia to think that you can fund the troops and send them to their deaths, and that's exactly what they're doing. Ben Cardin campaigned as an anti-war candidate, which was a farce, and he should be ashamed of himself. He has continued to vote for funding. Every funding bill that has come up, he has voted for. He refuses to listen. When we say to him, fund full withdrawal, I don't know why that's so hard for the Democrats to understand. It is strictly political now. If they really wanted to end this war, they could end it tomorrow, and it is that simple. So I want to take the opportunity to welcome Delegate Jill Carter. She has come out to be with us today. Obviously, she knows what's involved here. and. She wanted to be with us. We are going to take this coffin up to the National Guard Armory, but before we do, um, Delegate Carter would like to say a few words. Thank you, yeah. Maria. I can't say that I'm honored to be here today because it's very troubling that we have to be here in protest on a war that most Americans know should end and that the President refuses to hear the cry of most of America, especially when so many of our, our young people are being permanently injured and, and being killed. But what I'd really like to say is that for anyone who's serious or gives lip, lip service to claiming that they want to end the war and that we should bring the troops home, it's politically schizophrenic to say that you want to bring the troops home, that you want to end the war, and then send 1,300 new troops from Maryland to Iraq especially when we have so many problems right here in Maryland and, and in Baltimore City. Earlier this year, um, I wrote a statement that Baltimore had more homicides than Baghdad. Um, and so I would just urge my fellow Democrats in the State House, in the legislature, in the City Council, the uh, Mayor Dixon and Governor O'Malley to put their actions where their mouths are, if they really want to end the war, take the steps necessary to do it. Now, and Delegate Carter, how do you feel about the fact that the Democrats, at least the two state senators in this in our in our state, are continuing to vote to fund the war? We're talking about Mikulski and uh, Cardin. How do you feel about that? I think it's, it's I think it's the wrong thing to do. I think that I understand the, the explanations and the excuses, but I think, again, it's political schizophrenia to claim you want to end the war, you want to bring the troops home, and then continue to support it. And so I think it's the wrong way to go, and, and, they, need, and, and they need to hear this message from the people. Uh, anything else? I, I suppose that's it for now. Um, I just want to note that you know, we've got the symbolic coffin here, and that we're about to take a march. We are marching to the... National Guard, National Armory. Guard Armory, and um, we certainly want, thank you for being here, we welcome everybody to join us. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Richard, I understand you got a poem you want to read. I'd like to recite this part of the poem. Cause okay, it's part long. of it, okay. A poem I wrote a few weeks ago about a soldier I know. A soldier I know was required to go to fight unforgivable war. He knew it was wrong, he knew all along war, an extension, extension of tour. The war was a loss in spite of the cost and treasure and blood of the guys. They sent women too, as men were too few to fight a war started with lies. A fool's errand makes gigantic mistakes. The Congress which made them said, oops, 
They put on a face to turn crime into grace and called it supporting the troops. My friend now must go to prove what we know, that he is a patriot bold, a true sacrifice at risk of his life, to trust them and do what he's told. But somewhere inside his soldierly pride is not what he thought it could be. The honor he sought, which cannot be bought to fight for folks to be free, was tarnished by those in millionaires' clothes who wanted to control all the oil, who cared not for ones regarded as pawns to use as long as they're loyal. The courage they need to stop all the greed corrupting our missions abroad is just say no, no longer will go to die for oil and for sod. Okay, now this is your poem, Richard. What's the title of it? A Soldier I Know. Okay, okay, thanks so much. Harry, how do you spell your last name? Egbert, E-G-B-E-R-T. Okay, why are you here tonight and why are you protesting? I'm a physician. It's bad for your health to do what we're doing. It's a nice demonstration of how bad it is for your health. Very simple, very straightforward, right there. And it comes, uh, that's the purpose of war, is to make other people's health bad. And uh, therefore they'll obey and do what we want them to do, at least for the time being. How do you feel about the Democrats saying, oh, we're just going to continue this funding because we're going to protect the troops? How do, you, do you buy that? Oh, we have, uh, we have a national organization for the prevention of war, and we met uh, our Senator Cardin's aide and Senator McCluskey this past uh, week, and both of them were, were amazingly vague. They, uh, they wanted to say, oh, yes, our spirit's right, we want to uh, do right by our troops, but when we put the concrete message to them, do the right by them by getting them a home to protect us rather than attack them, uh, they got big. And Cardin, too. Um, so you're disappointed? I'm uh, very disappointed chronically with Senator Mikulski, and I'm getting disappointed with Cardin. Because no matter Whatever explanation they have, the funding goes on, the war goes on. Now it's a civil war over there, yeah. so they're sending people in the, in the chaos. Yeah. And they know that. And uh, certainly Senator Cardin's aid was very clear, but he knows that, that this is keeping these soldiers in harm's way, hurting other people, and doing nothing that's good for the United States. Anything else? Um, thank you. Uh, Cindy, why are you here tonight? Well, it's getting harder and harder just to live in this country, so I just keep coming, hoping that our efforts are going to be a big part of the efforts of the thousands of people across the country that are really ending this war. It's us that's ending it. It's not certainly not the Bushites, and it's certainly not the uh, lead Democrats because they're making so many deals, but I feel like we're the ones doing it, so I could have been at the comedy club tonight, but I'd rather be here. And, uh, you know, in the last election, and Pelosi says this, she said this, the people spoke in the last election that they wanted the war ended. She said that was the mandate from the election, November 7th, 2006. And yet, they've got the power to do it. They could cut off the funding. So are you disappointed with the Democrats? Oh, yeah, but it's time for us to beat up the Democratic Party. It's not time for us to leave them alone. It's time for us to keep beating them up because they really need us now. And when Pelosi has to walk over fake dead bodies to get out of her office to go meet with Bush, then I know that our people are in the right place because it cannot make her happy. Sorry, you got to go. Okay. Thank you, Cindy.